Hello and welcome to another panel discussion. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Python CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Adrian Davis, who's up in Toronto, Canada, Rob Jollis, who is in Maryland, and Nicholas Kimler, who is in Los Angeles. Um, so we're going to talk about AI in sales, this artificial intelligence in sales. Now, if you're if you're attending the the webinar, there's a chat window. If you want to ask a question, just put it in the chat window, and I'll pose it to to the panel. Uh, if you're listening to this uh, as a recording later on, then I encourage you to share this with all of your friends. So before we get started with the actual questions, what I would like to do is get the panelists to introduce themselves rather than me reading out bios. So maybe start with you, Rob. Do you want to just quickly introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are? Sure. My name is Rob Jollis. Um, I'm a uh, professional speaker. Got about two and a half million miles in the air, 31 years on the road. Uh, I've written a handful of books uh, on sales. Uh, former New York Life agent, former Xerox sales rep, sales oh. trainer, and uh, all around good guy. <laughs> Especially all around good guy. <laughs> okay, and Nicholas? Uh, Nicholas Kimler, I'm the CEO and founder of Pipeline CRM, and our, I'm originally from Austria, Vienna, and came over uh, right now six and a half, almost seven years ago to build the company. And it's amazing what happened, and I'm really excited about really to make not only to the product, but to our whole vision an impact and helping salespeople to get more efficient, more effective, and help them in the transition that we're all in today. Yeah, and for full disclosure, obviously, Nicholas is CEO of Pipeliner CRM. Nicholas and I work closely together. And Adrian. Yes, uh, welcome and thanks very much for having me. Adrian Davis, I am the president of a consulting company called Whetstone, professional speaker, author of Human to Human Selling, and a sales trainer and consultant. Uh, very similar in ways to Rob Jollis, except for the all-round good guy part. <laughs> <laughs> I aspire to that. Um, don't don't we all? Don't, don't we all? If we, can re if we can reach Rob levels one day, it'll be a good thing. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Adrian, why don't we kick off with you with the with the first question? So we're talking about artificial intelligence and sales, and just like everything else that comes along, right? There's been a lot of noise about it, um, and it seems like every you know three years, we uh, three to five years, we have something new that comes out. There's a lot of noise about it, and it's almost like you know AI and is going to take over everything in sales. So let's let's spend a moment and uh, you know maybe separate the myths uh, from the reality. And what do you think is the reality of, of AI uh, in sales today? Yeah, I think you're quite right. There is a lot of hype about it, and I think for good reason. I think this is something that is going to catch the sales world by storm. I think it's going to have a significant effect that's really unpredictable. We don't fully know. But in terms of today, I, I think the, the hype is really around AI replacing salespeople and that we, we don't need salespeople because we're going to have these, you know, automated uh, robots or software that can really take care of all the needs of a buyer. So that's sort of the hype. Um, rather than replace, I would say the reality today is that AI is really supporting salespeople. And, and so it's gonna help salespeople or it is helping salespeople make better use of their time, better you know, focus on which leads are better qualified, uh, how to better engage these uh, leads in conversation. So I think AI is playing a support role now but if I were a salesperson, I wouldn't, a transactional salesperson, I wouldn't be resting on my laurels because while AI is supporting, it's also learning. And I think it's learning with the objective to replace. Yeah, good points there. And I think absolutely, I think in the transactional world, for sure, I think in the, in the complex sale, it's a bit different. Um, how about you, Nicholas? What do you think the, there's a lot of hype right now. What do you think the reality and the hype is? Um, yeah, no, I, I think we should go a little bit deeper uh, and, and, and looking uh, at the topic from different angles. Uh, the one angle is definitely, if we remember, uh, the prediction was when the computer or uh, the desktop computer was entering into the world, everybody would say, well, we will see our people we will be re replaced. Today, it's exactly, it's exactly the opposite. I think with every technology, we have to see our, it's an addition um, and it's not a replacement. So I would agree definitely with Adrian on, on that topic. But 
from a technology point of view, we have to look a little bit deeper. Our, there is no doubt for me from a technology point, and we do AI, yeah, so we can speak about that a little bit later, but from a technology point of view, there is no question that there is a tremendous move coming. Why? Our, I have our, a little bit more than a year released a little ebook on AI in sales. Yeah? And at that time, I was going to GitHub, or probably you guys know that, that was acquired by Microsoft for $6.4 billion, the biggest open source community in the world uh, on programmers and stuff like that. And so at that time, there were uh, 24 million programmers a year ago and 68 million um, projects, more or less, yeah, uh, that you can find in there. Today, I was going today, it's over 31 million and 100 million projects. And then I was looking a little bit deeper, how many of the 100 million are related to AI? And over 200,000 projects already in the repository are related to AI. And our backend in Pipeline CRM is written in Python. There is over 32,000 results in Python related to AI with yeah. millions of pro. So there is no question there is this coming. The question is what is coming? And mm -hmm. this is what we have to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Rob, what do you think? What, what is it? There's a lot of hype about AI right now. What do you think is the reality as we stand today? Yeah, well, I'm going to take off the good guy gloves right off the bat. <laughs> uh, today, Rob Joss will be playing the role of the cantankerous old man standing at his doorstep saying, get off my lawn. <laughs> uh, uh, look, uh, first of all, it's coming. I get it. Um, and, and I'm fine. But um, Adrian, I think you hit on something really important, which is, you know, well, who exactly maybe is, is it going to replace? Um, if I were an order taker, um, I'd be concerned. Uh, however, um, I, I, I think um, as we grow into the technology, we'll know more. What concerns me, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out a, a one particular bank, and, and, they, and I happen to be a customer of theirs, but what concerns me is the, the notion that it can sort of replace a salesperson for right now. Um, a computer didn't replace people, it enhanced people, and enhanced their work. Uh, you know, Capital One Bank has been running an ad, for instance, that's they're going to revolutionize the banking industry and how they're going to do it. One of the things they're very clear about is uh, their, their quote is they're there to help you but not sell you. Um, I find that irresponsible. Uh, I, I, uh, I really don't want to go into a bank where I'm investing and, and trying to take care of my future and my children and, um, and work with a bunch of order takers that are too afraid to ask me second and third level questions about a problem I'm too afraid to address. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that AI, as, as I'm understanding it, 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 it's early, it's coming, uh, very transactional. But I think that I, I, I'm very curious to see how that artificial intelligence will go second, third, fourth level deeper into questions about a problem. Um, I understand it, it, it can react to certain information, but can it go deeper? Can it, can it intelligently problem solve? That's yet to be seen. So, uh, uh, I, I, you know, last point, and I'll tell you, I do remember I was 21 years old when the computers actually came into New York life. And we had some, sadly, we lost a lot of older salespeople that said, you know, bah humbug, I'm not going to um, move to that technology. And it, and it ran them over like a bulldozer um, because it enhanced, but it didn't replace. And that's key. Yeah, abs absolutely. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think, I think we probably will see... Um, you know, in the, we'll probably see the rapid adoption of it in the transactional world. It's it's in the complex sale that I think will be more. It'll it'll take a little bit longer and need to be figured out more. So maybe um, Nicholas will just start the second question. So, you know, given the fact that obviously, you know, we've already been working in AI. What do you think the potential of AI holds for the future for, uh, particularly the complex sale, the B to the B to B. Or it goes in many ways. Or I think what we have to go deeper is here. Or we are at the beginning of learning or in some areas. Or and the beginning are of every algorithm or and behind every AI, we want, as it says, or that the system in itself is not only learning, it takes over some 
manual processes what today a, a, a robot is doing in, mm -hmm. in when when the car is produced yeah so you want to replace here some processes uh, our experience right now are uh, in 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 the company and speaking really with hundreds of different companies around the world with thousands of users uh, on a regular basis is that the company's learning and they and, and I think that is crucial learning to first to establish their own internal processes and there is not so many companies to be honest even enterprise companies they learn to work with multiple are depending workflow processes yeah so when they are connected to each other artificial intelligence in that area uh, would in some ways give you predictions in some areas so we have to make a step back and say where is that data coming from you need a lot of data so think about of a mid-sized company where is this massive data let's say you want to bring in sales AI and you want to have a better forecast yeah okay on what basis of data you do that let's say if you're at the beginning of a startup well you have not a lot of data so what what you're forecasting on AI mm -hmm. even if you're a little bit bigger so AI is depending first of all on different algorithms and then on a lot of data and if you don't have this massive of data maybe the prediction is totally wrong yeah if we think really practical uh, and so one of the things that are probably are we will see in the future is where is this data coming from mm -hmm. and can we mix this data are there for a company who has maybe a multiple or uh, different product line are the data can we combine the data and how this is really separating mm -hmm. like you have a service line you have a product line so there are so many things and so we are really at the beginning uh, at yeah. the early stage yeah so for sure um, and Adrian, what about you? What do you? What potential do you think AI holds, particularly for the B two B more complex sale? Yeah, I'm glad, uh, John, that you're focusing the discussion on the more complex sale because that that really is the question. I think we're all in agreement that the order taker, the transactional seller, is in trouble in the future. In terms of the B two B complex sales professional, are they in trouble in the future? I don't know. I, I, we don't know where this is going. Um, I think for now, AI is going to become a, a greater support tool for that B2B professional, where it's going to help them know which stakeholder. And by complex sale, I guess, you know, a kind of very simple definition. These are decisions that are made by buying committees, multiple stakeholders over a long period of time. Uh, and so I think that uh, AI is going to be very effective in pinpointing where the effort needs to be applied. So as a B2B professional, I think Nicholas's point about data, you know, in, in, in the ability to gather and analyze lots and lots of data, and then point me in the right direction, say this stakeholder, you need to present this value proposition, or you need to uncover this additional information because previous successful sales pursuits have shown that by targeting this type of stakeholder with this kind of discovery conversation, will yield the opportunity to position this value. Uh, so I think for the immediate future, to answer your question very quickly now, is to say uh, AI is gonna be great for the B2B complex sales professional in the near future. In the distant future, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. And, and Rob, um, what do you think the potential for AI is? Well, we've had a. This isn't really all that confusing. It's data, and it's and it's um, the ability to quickly and rapidly work our way through data and and move us to uh, better decisions, better decision making. Uh, that that goes without question. I think it's also, uh, as I'm hearing in the discussion, uh, a tremendous support tool. Uh, again, I you know there I was 21, and uh, all of a sudden I got out of a rate book and I started getting uh, computerized. Uh, printouts <laughs> on on life insurance um, proposals that 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 was a game changer. It was wonderful. It enhanced. I, I'm going to pull up the cautionary flag and 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 uh, and quote. Uh, it was either me or Einstein. I think it was Einstein. Who said, <laughs> Imagination is more important than knowledge. So um, I'm not digging my heels in. I I yeah. want that information, but I do want to. You know, I I just hope that as it evolves we have you know 
great trainers out there like Adrian, uh, who are going to remind people that um, AI is going to be, uh, it's going to take a while for AI to feel empathy, if it can. <laughs> and uh, it's going to take a, a while uh, for this to um, not overpower clients with data as well. Remember, data we, we, is, is a wonderful tool to help us prepare for the client. But think of the biggest mistake that most salespeople make, most presenters make, which is too much data, too much mm -hmm. information. Um, and, and, and again, lost is, is something that uh, I, I have it somewhere on my bookshelf. I have a, a 1912 um, sales manual from, um, I think it's North, Northwest Mutual or one of them. And it's and then on page one, it says, ask questions and listen. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, and- um, Timeless. You know, right, it's timeless. And yet, um, Adrian, I don't know, but when you go out, but you know, sometimes I'll just go out and take, have them take out their smartphones and sell something. And then, and, and, I, and I con them and I tell them, I'm just looking at your style. And then I ask them to count how many questions they're asking. And these are grizzled, seasoned people. And uh, their ratios are 8, 10, 15 to 1, mm -hmm. statements over questions. So like anything else, I'm not blaming AI. Let's say here it comes. And here comes a tremendous data resource. Let's just make sure that we put a bridle in it and hold on to it and control it. Control it. <laughs> I, I just want to jump on something that you said there, Rob, with uh, quoting Einstein, where imagination is more important than knowledge. And I think that for the, again, the sales professional and the B2B complex sale, uh, there's a difference between problem solving and value creation. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I think with problem solving, I, I do believe, Rob, that AI will get to the point where it can ask those second and third level questions, discovery questions, and do something with the answers, and maybe even fake empathy. It won't be able to feel empathy, but maybe, maybe you can fake empathy. Uh, but value creation deals with imagination, it deals with context, it, it, and, and it's not finding the answer, it, it's collaborating and creating a, a mutual answer with the client. I don't see AI ever getting to this point. Yeah, yeah I, think, no. I think that's a good uh, that's a good point. And um, and maybe Nicholas, if you if you take this, so I think one of the one of the dangers we always have, right, is this pendulum swing. And we've seen it in the past when you get some automation or technology, it comes in like companies start to say, okay, this can really help me rather than help the customer and you start to automate or use AI or whatever to make it to make life easier for you within the company. So how do you, um, how do you strike that balance between leverage, how to use it correctly and how not to turn it into a, a new phone tree? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's the challenge because definitely a lot of companies are immediately jumping on the train of wrong promises. And we know that marketing is are not against marketer yeah so don't get me wrong here yeah but marketing is immediately jumping on some promises and are they are never fulfilled and are i think for a lot of companies they have to dig deeper and are, i think we have to just go back to common sense yeah if we have some common sense what is really possible and what is predictable every company in some form needs to be more are effective in what they do and efficient in the details and the efficiency in the detail comes out are and this is why i strongly believe ai and sales have a different or or i would say come together than maybe ai in other industries because sales at the end is in the B2B complex sales, especially when you sell, let's say, to enterprise, what we sometimes do, uh, you have not one person, you have, let's say, five, six player on, on both sides. Mm -hmm. So you have 12 people. It's like playing check. Yeah? How, you, how, how would AI make all the combinations, everything together? It's, it's endless. And here I would say there is wrong promises out there, wrong marketing promises out there. They are more, in my opinion, are not helpful because they are pushing a hype and then we will have our, a bubble. And then we are sitting there again. 
but the community is strong and you see if if you have your five senses together as a ceo and as a leader and you make a decision you're not buying something you you have to dig deeper you have to look at that and ask good questions this is what i said look at the solutions yeah you don't buy a car with wrong promises that it starts flying and you have never seen it yeah <laughs> so show me yeah then i will be maybe surprised but I haven't seen anything right now for sales I have not seen anything that really works in complex sales that is surprising me this is why we call it a pipeliner what we have created Voyager as you said mm -hmm. Andrew and also Rob it's supporting and I believe in that and hey this is a big gain already and let's mm -hmm. be honest this is a <laughs> it's great that we have supporting technology yeah well, I better uh, cancel my order for my flying car then. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of a shock. Um, okay, um, so um, Rob, um, from your point of view, because you made that comment earlier about the bank and, and stuff, which was interesting, but there is, a, there is a, 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 a tendency or a temptation in companies when you get a, a technology like this is to, wow, this can fix a lot of our internal issues and internal problems, and we don't look at how is this actually serving the customer on the other end? Yeah, I, you know, I think the magic word, and um, um, and again, I, 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 I've just met Adrian, but whenever I hear I've, I've got a sales trainer on the, on the line with me, I, I'm, I'm always interested in, in his uh, feelings. But, you know, frequently, whenever we're trying to create change, uh, rarely do, we, do I work with an organization that's never heard of sales training before. Um, and one of the biggest challenges is to avoid the flavor of the month syndrome they keep mm -hmm. changing the processes and changing the processes uh, which are not that which are usually not dramatically failing them it's the implementation of the processes that are failing them nobody people forgot to hang around and tell them that now that you got this new toy how are you going to use it so one i think that if we're if we just watch our language and realize that you know ai is there to enhance it may you know to find its spot and enhance i think that's one of the keys because the danger in that pendulum swing that you're talking about is just to go knee deep, you know, as fast as we can. And it's going to be the customer that pays the price. Um, and, you know, and I even think of sometimes when I get into these, which we could, I think we could call a form of artificial intelligence when we're, when we're trying to reach a human being mm -hmm. uh, in customer service and we are lost in a tree that is spitting us out. We're not moving fast enough. We've already given that number three times already. And so there's a frustration. Uh, and that's the, 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 the clash of artificial intelligence and, and the human condition. And uh, so if we, I think if we, we, we watch yourself and we, and we remember that we're there to enhance. One last example I'll, I'll tie this to, you know, uh, the last flavor of the month in my industry is online training. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, everybody was jumping, you know, super fast at online training. That's wonderful. Uh, I happen to have a book on training and I, I, it's in its fourth edition. They needed new chapters. I had to write a chapter on online training. And the very first sentence was, was I'm not a fan of online training. <laughs> I am again, Mr. Yeah. Cantankerous, but I actually am. It just has to be used the right way. It right. will never get the mind share of the individual, but it's a wonderful implementation support device. And that's how it enhances. That's how we have to figure out how AI is going to behave. And when it truly enhances, uh, and we know how to control it, uh, I'll get off the front porch and I can, uh, and I will be, uh, you know, I'll be an adapter. Um, and you'll be welcoming people onto your lovely absolutely come on in with the, the, the coffee <laughs> yeah yeah so um uh, so adrian um how about from your point of view i mean the thing about when you get a, a big pendulum swing is if you're not careful that pendulum swings back and smacks you upside the head uh, very dramatically um so how do you how do you make sure that we put the the customer first and that however we leverage ai we don't start to use it to make our lives easier as opposed to their lives easier so I, first of all i don't think we can prevent that i think uh, to nicholas's point about the efficiency and effectiveness that people are very consumed with efficiency and making things more and more efficient and uh, we look at our processes we try to remove waste from the process and we're not really understanding that our process is the customer's experience. And, and to quote uh, Rob, I like what he said there, where the, um, our AI meets the human condition. 
And, and I think we need to think about that. And so I think when we think about our processes, to go back to Nicholas's point about effectiveness, we need to think about how does this process impact the customer experience? And does it create value in the customer experience? So I think we need to be very clear on what the buying process looks like, what the customer journey is, and how do we create value at each step along the way of the customer journey? And can AI help us do that? But I, I, I think as the pendulum swings, it's gonna knock a lot of sales professionals out of the industry. And yeah. I, think that, I think that's a good thing. Uh, I think the sort of the people who just show up and think that they can just collect a paycheck for doing nothing, uh, yeah. it's, gonna, it's gonna wipe them out. Uh, and then I say AI becomes more and more efficient and, and supportive it's going to force those who remain in the industry to move up the value chain. And rather than focusing on problems that are known and finding solutions that are known matching those problems, we're going to have to move to problems that are not known and not properly understood and helping the customer to understand those and solving them with solutions that have not yet been created. And, and I think that that is going to be a very uh, fulfilling human experience for both the buyer and the seller. Yeah, uh, that, that's um, that's a very very good interesting point. And where I want to go, where I want to go next is and uh, is is a, is more of a kind of it's sort of a philosophical. Maybe it's an ethical. Maybe it's a practical. I don't know. But okay, so we can leverage AI and bots and all of that and all of those things. And some of it is going to get, and it already has, but some of it's going to get very real to where you can no longer differentiate between whether it's a bot, it's, it's artificial, it's machine learning and real people. Do we have a, uh, should we be letting people know when it's, when it's not a real person and when it is a, re when it is a real person, when it is artificial, when it is a bot? Um, that's, a, it's a, that's just an interesting question I want to throw out. Maybe Nicholas, if you want to have a go at that first, but I think it's an interesting dilemma to wrestle with. Yeah, definitely. Or not only or from a transparency point of view, what I feel it's crucial for the future mm -hmm. uh, are to be transparent in the process are, are also from an ethical point of view, what kind of algorithms are behind that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we are at the beginning and we have to discuss it really deep. Uh, I was uh, really totally surprised uh, if you guys remember last year when Mark Zuckerberg was at the Senate and he had the hearing about Facebook and all the problems around Facebook. And then he said, we have a problem right now with our AI uh, to uh, really uh, have the algorithm to find in the text the right, uh, uh, I would say, problematic topics and so they had to hire thousands of new people they're right now reading the papers yeah? if you remember this so when a bot is right now running automatically um, we have not to forget this is a human being first who has implemented an algorithm with his spectacles on and uh, and at least we should be at that open honest and saying that is a machine and it can be accurate or not, we don't know, yeah? But it's not a human being. If we fake that, and like what I've seen in the last couple of months and in the last year, where you have even a fake profile, now we have the problem anyhow, they are deleting that any, yeah? But um, there was uh, companies, they're starting to have fake uh, profiles running around in LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Come on, <laughs> where is this going? Yeah, this makes, for me, no sense at all. Yeah? So yeah. I feel transparency has to be. If we do that, I would say, here's my algorithm. If you want to dig, yeah, if you want to dig, you give them access, yeah, you show them. And the transparency and say, this is not a human being. Yeah? This is not faking. Yeah? Yeah, that's a that's a great point, uh, Nicholas. And just to underline that is because we do forget sometimes that we think um, when something is delivered by technology, we forget the fact that there was somebody who who programmed that, who designed that, who, and they put their own biases and their own approach within that. So it's not, it's not suddenly neutral just because it's a technology. Um, and what about you, Rob? What do you think? Um, do, we have a, do, do we have an obligation to let people know what is technology, what is a bot, what is AI, and what is not? 
Yeah, it's a, it's a very tricky question. I, I think the line we're looking for is deception. We're looking not to deceive people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, it, that, that's the best line I can find. And, um, and then we, you know, we, we have to belly up to the bar and not be afraid of this, meaning um, that um, if, if we're putting that line out there and saying that, it, it, you know, we will not deceive, um, then the, the second question is to really get the client on board, meaning, you know, when in sales, we call the whiff them, what's in it for that client? Um, mm -hmm. Is it speed? Is it accuracy? When a client can see that, um, there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, and, um, you know, that's, again, when we push back to that, to, to that kind of automated tree that, that does frustrate people, I think the belief is that this is slowing us down. This is not speeding us up. In other words, this might be good for the company, but it doesn't feel good for the customer. And there's that litmus test right there of, well, okay, um, then, you know, then we have an issue. Where, you know, we, so um, to me, it, it really falls on the line of as this technology improves, we probably could get away with um, deceiving the customer into believing that this is, you know, a real person. Um, and we just have to, you know, we can't take the bait. We can't, we can't fall into that trap. Uh, and like I said, just to repeat one more time, uh, why would we, if in fact um, the AI is there to enhance, obviously, as we started the show out with data collection, uh, you know, uh, being able to enhance information that that salesperson has, ultimately that benefits the customer. And if it be benefits the customer, we really don't, have to, to play that deception game. Uh, let, 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 let me John, uh, to add to, to, to Robert, the, because I strongly, you see, Google has never faked it, never. From the beginning of Google, you were knowing it's a machine, it's an algorithm, uh, it, it, and, and we used to that. Yeah? We all know there is a bias behind the algorithm, uh, and we know, okay, we live by that. So why we are start faking right now, giving a profile of a nice lady behind mm -hmm. that and saying, oh, you're speaking to a human being when you, everybody knows you don't. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I, I see no value from a customer perspective. Yeah? Yeah, I agree. And what, what do you think, Adrian? What are, what are the obligations, do you think, or what do you think is a smart approach to take? Yeah, I think I'll just start off by saying I think it is unethical that if I am on the phone with somebody or an email exchange with somebody and I actually think it's a human being, and, and to Rob's point, I'm actually being deceived, I think it's unethical. Mm -hmm. I, I think there will come a point when it will not be perceived as unethical when it is prevalent. Right now, it's unethical simply because I don't know. And the history of marketing and sales is that we spoil everything, right? So when, when the telephone became a, a marketing and sales tool, we jumped on it and, and then tele, we had to have legislation to prevent from telemarketing. Same with fax machines, same with email, same with LinkedIn. Every technology that enables us to communicate and market and sell, we, we take it to the extreme and we spoil it so that people have to swing the pendulum back, as you said earlier, John, and go back to you know the traditional older methods of communication. So I think when it is prevalent, and, and maybe, you know, John, you're here hosting us and we know you're a real human being, but maybe in the future you'll be a hologram. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, maybe, maybe I am already, who knows? <laughs> who knows, right? <laughs> um, and, and so I think when it, when, when it is prevalent and people expect that this could be AI, that will be a different scenario. But today, if we don't know, I think companies have an obligation to use Nicholas's term of being transparent. And I saw, I think it was about a year ago, a TED talk um, where it was from Google and it was Google Calendar AI making an appointment for a haircut or something like that. And it was so human and, and it just, it, it kind of knew how to chuckle and, and you know, uh -huh, and, and it just sounded so human and it made, it made the appointment. It was, it was drop dead scary. And this is rudimentary. This is rudimentary technology. Who knows where it will be in five, 10 years? Oh yeah, that's, that, that's for sure. Because as I said at the beginning, mm -hmm. you have these millions of people coding on a daily basis. So this is exponentially. So we, will, we have to have discussion on this part more deeper uh, on the ethical side, but uh, someone has to start that. What, is, what should be done? What should be allowed in the future? Because some of that stuff will definitely deceive us. 100%. Do you think, uh, Nicholas, there'll be a need for legislation? Yeah, well, uh, 
I'm a free market guy. I'm coming from the Austin School. All right, so I'm coming really from Hayek and Schumpeter, and and our, here you have the problem um, that was rooted deeply in economics, uh, because in economics the people were also trying to predict something, yeah, trying to predict the outcome. And the Austin School, especially our uh, Hayek and and and, and uh, Mises, and also Schumpeter was a little bit different, but they were predicting. Uh, it needs mathematics, and they were against mathematics. Why? Because the human being cannot be predicted. I cannot predict what you do tomorrow. It's not possible. Maybe you have uh, an unbelievable engagement, and tomorrow your world is different. Yeah. So how you can predict? And the prediction will be one of the things that AI is doing for sales, especially. You predict the outcome, let's say, when we go deeper, uh, the outcome of forecasting. Mm -hmm. And then you make decisions on that. Maybe these decisions are completely wrong because how you can predict a team of, uh, of four or five people working together. I feel there, there will be, and all of this comes to a decision, to an action, to a task. Because um, if AI is not, well, AI is not taking over every task, yeah, because then we are obsolete totally. And this is what I don't believe in B2B sales. I, I cannot see that in the next 20, 40, 50 years because I can't see that. Yeah, this is technically not possible. It's like when my son sits in the back of the car and he believes we can uh, teleport one day uh, and being on Mars. Yeah, this is not technically not possible. Yeah. So I think it's an ethical, as you correctly say, there will be a lot of legislation. I don't know. The market is the strongest force. Car, um, mature, mature buyers we need. <laughs> yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's an interesting point. I think, Adrian, I think, um, leg, as you said earlier, legislation often comes because things are, are abused, right? Or, you know, run, and I think um, you're, I, I would hope that we won't have to go down that route, you know, that we'll, f we'll figure it out for ourselves and, uh, and be able to, uh, to move forward with it. But I do think from an ethical point of view, I do think people need to know, uh, because if it's, if it's, if it helps you and it's efficient and, and whatever, then that's fine. Then you're, you're good with it. It doesn't matter to you whether it's one person or the other. And I think to Nicholas's point is um, when you build technology, you have to build it with logic, right? And, and people are not, people are illogical half the time. So you, can, you can't build in a, mm -hmm. um, you can't build it to replicate a human perfectly. Um, so Rob, let's, let's um, in the last while we have here, let's look forward a bit and tell me, maybe on, I was just going to ask you what excites you about AI for the future, but maybe let's do both from everybody. What excites you and what scares you? Okay. Um, I'm normally a, a very much of an optimist, but I tell you this, this last little piece of the conversation kind of, Sh I, I, it shook me up a little because um, was it was it just the thought of, was it the thought of me being a horror grand? That was exactly <laughs> what it was. Yeah. I, like I, I, I got white as a ghost. I don't know if yeah. you can see that, but um, no, you know what was my, I was just sitting here listening and thinking that um, you know we're not challenged right now by the ethics issue because the technology isn't good enough, but when that technology gets really good. And it can feel, let's say, and it can do these things. Then it becomes, then it shifts to integrity. Yes. And it shifts to, and you know, and I guess everybody has their own definition of integrity, but I, I always learned that it's just doing the right thing, even, even when you know you can get away with doing the wrong thing. And um, so that, that scares me. And then, you know, I hear um, Adrian's point, you know, about um, just trying to, uh, contain this and, and uh, just make sure that we just make sure that we handle this properly. I don't know. It, 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 I, so to answer your question, okay. It, you know, what, what excites me about it in the future? I love the idea. Uh, look, computers made me a better salesman. They made me a better salesman because I had more access to data uh, with my clients. I, I, I clearly remember selling a, what was called a convertible term policy that we would that I I was taught to work out the numbers on a placemat at a particular restaurant because it was a paper placemat and what client is going to take a paper placemat home with them at the end of the meeting so all kinds of funny numbers going around but when that computer came out could truly print out here's what happens when we take the loan out here's how long that loan here's what happens if rates change and really made us smarter 
ultimately it took care of the customer. And that's, that's, that's the beauty of artificial intelligence to me. If we can, uh, particularly uh, even right now, um, improve that customer service, um, uh, you know, speed and accuracy, uh, uh, help us forecast a little bit quicker and more accurately. It's funny, I, I got, you know, I, I, I was raised, to, you know, kind of as a Xerox guy, which everything was a process. But as I'm starting to kind of, uh, mature as a business person, I'm finding that, yes, sometimes there are processes out there, but other times there isn't a process. It's a percentage, meaning that it's that this isn't necessarily a repeatable, predictable process that's going to assist you. If we do things this way by percentage points, we'll be more efficient. And so it's more of a percentage grabs. And I see artificial intelligence as being a way of improving the percentages of what we do and how we do it. And, and there's a whole list. We just like anything else, like any new toy. And, um, uh, you know, what did I, I think I wrote down this thing from Adrian about, we spoil everything. Um, <laughs> you know, that one, I got to tell you, that one I'm going to remember. Uh, let's not spoil it. Let's, let's, let's behave. Um, and if we do, yes, obviously this is a wonderful thing. And, uh, and, and, and maybe it will, uh, in a positive way, help the salespeople out there realize that uh, we're still gonna have to ask questions, we're still gonna have to, to listen, we're still gonna have to go deeper, we're still gonna have to problem solve, but we're gonna have tools that will help us and our customer work more efficiently. If, if we can sign up to that, I'm all for it. Yeah, I, lo I love that. It's like we have the new tagline, sales and marketing, we ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think, Adrian? What excites you about AI for the future and, and what, um, what scares you? And I think to Rob's point is, you know, we have to start approaching this not as what can we do, but what should we do? Yeah, I'm with Rob that, uh, you know, technology made me a better salesperson. I think it's made sales a better profession. And so what excites me is the prospect that artificial intelligence is going to force salespeople to become more intelligent because we're gonna to have to operate above the layer of artificial intelligence. So I think pushing salespeople into a much higher uh, stratosphere where they're really focused on value creation and, and really connecting with customers and, and really becoming business people and business consultants and, and strategists who are helping senior executives steer into the future. I think that's very exciting. Eliminating the bottom feeders, uh, getting uh, order takers out of the profession so that when a salesperson shows up, you're going to have high trust because this is a, a professional with a brain that, that, is, that can create and imagine and is here to help. I think all of that is very exciting. Uh, what scares me, I, I would call, is the, the runaway train syndrome. That you know we're dealing with deep learning, with oodles of data, and, and artificial intelligence teaching itself and learning from itself and getting smarter and smarter so that we don't know where this is going. And, and I think the unknown is, it, it, it's frightening. Uh, if we behave ourselves and we, we govern this thing and use it properly, it's gonna be spectacular. Uh, on the other hand, it could be very Orwellian uh, and very dangerous if it gets out of control. Yeah, thanks, Adrian. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more. Um, and Nicholas, before you answer this question, I just uh, maybe you would answer this question from Angela. Uh, Green. Uh, she said, I'd love to hear some specific examples of how AI has been used to increase conversions. <clears throat> so I was thinking maybe you could say like how I, you could just um, sort of show how or tell how AI has been used by Pipeliner to aid the salesperson to be better at able to convert business. Our Basically, the information that we are can get to our gather around right now today with AI so far is are to minimize the risk factors and leverage the opportunities. And minimizing the risk factor is how often, let's say, a person has interacted with you, or is there anything an interaction? If someone, let's say, automatically, you know, there is no communication. He, you had twenty calls or twenty emails. 
or another communication from a whole team and he never opened an email, it was never received or whatever, then I have immediately an alarm signal. So the conversion would be when the interaction is really happening, I can immediately see, okay, this is an opportunity that I should prolong or I should go there. The same is with a lead because our, today the, the, the big uh, issue is we all bombarded when we have a real lead and how we can convert a lead in an opportunity and then a different process in p2p sales starts how you bring a, a real opportunity to the to the process and engagement is one because ai can have more a holistic view on the engagement but this is a supportive it tells me here uh, okay i can see um, the guy has looked at the website he was going or maybe to a trade show. He was asking another person. He has interacted with another division. And immediately you get a holistic view of the customer that the customer is really engaging. And as we say, um, in my opinion, um, our, the seller should never move as long as not the buyer has made an action. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you push him, yeah, and you cannot push him over the the finish line. It's not possible, yeah, mm -hmm. and and therefore AI can help you in the engagement. Or as one mm -hmm. example, there is many, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and uh, so uh, and as part of the the AI enablement means that it can keep you focused where you should be focused, right, rather than focused everywhere. And AI can gather all these different pieces of information, like in Pipeliner, and say, sure. here are the opportunities, here are the leads you should be focused on right now so it's an efficiency thing as well so oh break. definitely definitely well i'm totally excited about what i've heard are because you see you guys said our uh, technology has helped you to become a better salesperson that is why we started the company yeah. <laughs> and, I, and i think we created probably to be honest the best and only as i said effective tool because our uh, as you see at the back, uh, there is only you have a couple of pictures on my wall. Um, there is only one tool that you can use, or uh, to effectively to put a picture on the wall with uh, with a nail, and it's a hammer. Yeah, <laughs> you you can do it with other tools too, but there is only one effective tool <laughs> to use it. Yeah. So if you say technology makes you a better salesperson, then we are in the right business. Okay, that means that's good. Uh, and we are on the edge. We are on the edge. Uh, so I can tell you, we're really programming a lot, but with the mind um, to think about what can be done today, what is realistic. And in my opinion, it is realistic to minimize the risk factors of a company. If you have 50 or 100 or hundreds of people, you want to minimize the risk in forecasting. You want to minimize the risk um, that they are maybe engaging in our in a customer complex sales and you have even to fly there and it, it's for, it makes no sense yeah so everything can today make come to the conclusion that you make better decision that excites me um we have done that our years ago with our technology i was one of the first companies are that worked with our autonomy it's a pedal recognition system and that was really almost 20 years ago are, and are today the neural language understanding or NLU yeah, are with the algorithms that you can use today with that that means you can out of the text create something is what excites me in the future we can maybe bring together this conversation and AI can make a summary of that gives us a synopsis of that and compares that maybe to other text and gives us that back to make a better decision yeah I agree. We will see in a couple of years where this is going. I see a long way before AI is getting empathy. I, 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 <laughs> this is, yeah. If that is even possible, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it's too far for me to, to look into the future. I, I don't see that. Yeah. yeah. Artificial empathy sounds, there sounds something wrong about that, doesn't there? <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> so, and, yet, uh, and yet it's one of the key skills that great salespeople possess yeah. right. because right. great salespeople aren't afraid to ask tougher questions and that's yeah. where the empathy comes in. Absolutely. So, so um, we're bumping up against the end of our time. Um, thank you everybody for, for participating. And in the last moment, uh, again, if each of you just want to tell people how they can learn more about you, contact you, et cetera, Rob. Okay. Uh, well, J O L L E S.com. That's uh, where 
it, that's where it's all housed. And uh, I do write something called a blarticle. You know, it's not a blog and it's not an article. It's a blarticle. Uh, <laughs> but I, I send them out. I'm in my 10th year of these nutty blarticles every two weeks. And um, a part of my legal definition when I registered was no more than 700 words. So short little bursts of information and, uh, um, and I'm something I'm, I'm quite proud of. And uh, other than that, you can learn about all my books and all that other there's things uh, on my website. Excellent. And Nicholas? Our Oh, please go to Pipeliner, really download our, especially the mobile, we're the first AI on mobile in the world. So we are starting there. Uh, try it out, our software, our, and what the gentleman said, or both of them, our technology can help you make a better salesperson. Yeah. Love it. And Adrian? Yes, uh, and thanks very much, John, for having uh, hosting us and making this happen. Uh, you can see more about me at adriandavis.com, A-D-R-I-A-N-D-A-V-I-S.com. Absolutely. Listen, uh, thanks, everybody, for attending and for those who are going to listen to this later on recording. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I hope you enjoyed the conversation about AI and sales, and maybe for once, sales and marketing can lead the push to implement this effectively and ethically and we can <clears throat> we can retire the tagline we ruin everything <laughs> 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 all right thanks everybody thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you guys okay. take care take care